boys and girls. It's time for another convocation. Today, I am coming at you, not live, from the infant room at our church. This is where we take care of little babies while their grown-up parents are at church services or other things that we have here at church. I'm here because we have been talking about how goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives. And this is our second week of that. And I think of this so often when I think of chasing around little toddlers. There are so many things we do to be good and merciful to them, and they don't always like it. We had some kiddos in here that haven't been able to come for a long time, and the littlest one was so happy, and his big brother, who's two, was not so happy. He wanted to run off into the rest of the church house and do all sorts of things. So we have doors like that. And next door in the room for toddlers, the door handles have a special thing on them so the kids can't open them by themselves. He didn't like that, but that was goodness and mercy because if he had run out on his own, he wouldn't have been safe. A lot of times as grown ups and as big kids, we have plans. And we think that our plan is surely the best way. But then things don't work out like we plan. Just like that little boy couldn't run out the door and play all over the whole big church house. That was his plan. And he was sure it was best. But it would not have been best. Because his mom and dad would have come back for him and they wouldn't have been able to find him. We chased him all around to keep him with us because that was good and that was merciful. And that's how God treats us. He's always chasing after us with goodness and mercy because that's his best plan. Boys and girls, today I have some special guests who have told us some stories of how their plans didn't work out, but they soon learned that it was God's goodness and his mercy chasing them every day of their lives. And his plan was best. First, let's hear from a favorite grandma and grandpa. You older kids might recognize the husband in this duo. Hi, this is Mr. and Mrs. Sterling. One time that God was very faithful and had his plan for our life that we weren't expecting maybe was at the beginning of our relationship. When I was um, getting ready to go to college, I really badly wanted to go to K-State for my degree, but my parents didn't have enough money for me to attend, so I had to stay at Washburn University to start my freshman year. I was disappointed at, about that, but what I didn't know was that God would have me run into Mr. Sterling's brother toward the end of that first semester, and he was just getting out of the Army and coming home from Vietnam, so I mentioned to his brother that I'd been praying for him, and he told Mr. Sterling, and then Mr. Sterling asked me out, and we've been together ever since. since. God was faithful and has been so many times in our lives. Isn't that amazing? You never know what God has planned. They met each other and they got married and they've had kids and they've had grandkids. If God hadn't changed their plan, maybe they wouldn't be here. What a huge, happy surprise that meeting was. Now... Let's hear from one of your favorite teachers. Good morning. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Mrs. Farwell. I am a fifth grade teacher here at Care Perivel. I'm going to share a short story with you about uh, the ways that God has worked and that we've gotten to see him work out the details for things that we could not have done ourselves. Well, last February, uh, we were presented with an opportunity to travel with my husband's job to go to Florida. Now, the timing was supposed to be that we would leave the Thursday at the end of spring break and get back on a Monday. We got really excited. We started looking at hotels. We were looking at airplane flights. We could not get an airplane flight with five seats for our family. We could get one flight that left like at four in the morning with like three seats. And then there was another flight that was going to leave 
on Wednesday, so we didn't have anywhere to stay that night, but there wasn't any hotel room available. We had an opportunity for a flight that had four seats, and so one of us would have had to fly on a different flight. We could not get all of the details to work out, and we were so disappointed. We kept thinking, we'll look again tomorrow. Maybe there will be more flights available. No, kept not working out. So we were all excited about this spring break trip, and then it just completely got shut down, canceled. No way we could do it. Just wasn't going to work. We gave up. So we were kind of sad, obviously, missing out on this trip to the beach. And then, as most of you remember, last year during spring break, there was this thing called COVID going around and everything started to get shut down. If we would have booked that flight, we would have been leaving Kansas on an airplane flight the same day that everything started to close, uh, that they were saying, you know, no more traveling, you need to stay home. We don't know what's going on with this. Do not leave. These are the stay at home orders. And I would have been in Florida when we were supposed to be at school planning out what's school going to look like during this whole COVID time period. What are we gonna do with all of these students and how will we get them their homework? God knew that we needed to be in Topeka, Kansas when all of that COVID madness started to hit. I am so thankful that God was looking out. He knew all of the details of what was coming um, and that none of this escaped his notice. His goodness and mercy follows us, even when we find ourselves disappointed and not understanding what it is that he has planned. Did you hear that? They had a plan that sounds so super fun. But it wouldn't have been fun, would it have? They would have been stuck. Oh my goodness. Good thing God had goodness and mercy chasing them down and that plan didn't work out like they thought. God's plan was better. Now let's hear from Sammy's grandparents who also happen to be two of my favorite people on the earth because they're my parents. Hi boys and girls. We're Todd and Sue Gibson from Granbury, Texas, but right now we're in Austin, Texas because we're camping and looking at all the blue bonnets it's that season. We just wanted to share with you for a minute about uh, a time in our lives when we thought we knew what we wanted and thought we uh, knew exactly where we were going, but God had other plans for us and they turned out to be just exactly what we needed. And when we stop and think about all the years that we've been together and developing our lives and we think about God directing us along the way and we didn't even realize it. And so it's hard to choose one, but I think the one we decided on is that when I was working at Lockheed Martin in Fort Worth, which builds military aircraft, uh, I'd been going back and forth to Japan where they co-produced the wings for the airplane. And so an opportunity came up for us to move over there for three years. And so we prayed about it and talked about it, went through the interview process thinking that we would be selected, but as time went on, they chose another employee and we were really disappointed and not understanding uh, you know, why it happened. But as uh, time went on, my mother developed cancer and then my father was ill and they both had failing health and passed away. And also during that time, our son was a senior in high school. So an opportunity came up again for the same job and we applied and got in and, and moved to Japan and lived there for three years, which was really a blessing then. And in our retirement. So it just uh, told us that God had plans for us that sometimes wasn't ours and we couldn't see the future, but he did and wanted the best for us. So it worked out well. Thank you boys and girls and teachers. You guys have a blessed day. Bye. Did you hear that? There was a job my dad really wanted. I was in college at Baylor when that happened. And I remember how disappointed my dad was. He was ready for a great adventure and everyone at work loved him. He thought surely he'd get the job, but he didn't. And he was so disappointed. But then my grandma, his mom got sick. Shortly after that, his dad got sick and he lived so close to them. So it was a good thing that they weren't way across the world in Japan. They were right up the street and they could help care for them. God was good. Now let's hear from one of my closest friends and a mama to five Care Paravel kiddos and hear about her story. Hi, I'm Mrs. Brian, mom to Amy, Clevens, Ian, Cameron, and Carter, and Mr. Brian's wife. We did foster care respite 
for two girls, sisters, and um, we were helping out another foster care family that needed a break. And it was a really difficult week, um, but we took care of them and um, we were all exhausted, all the older boys um, and Tom and me, and we took them back to their foster family when the time was over. And that very same day, we had a call from the foster care agency that there was a little baby that needed um, a place to stay. And um, Tom and I thought, oh, you know, it's too much. We've just had those two little girls and it was really rough on the family. And the boys um, probably wouldn't be ready to have another child in the house. So um, we told them we didn't think so, but we'd talked to our kids. And um, when they got home from school that day, we told them there was a little girl, baby, that needed um, a place to stay in foster care and that we had told them, foster care agency, that we probably couldn't do it because we just had those two little girls and it was a pretty difficult time with them. And we probably needed a break, but the boys all said, no, she needs a home and we have a home with lots of love and plenty of room. And so we called the foster care agency back and after we all prayed about it as a family, and we said, yes, we would love to take her if she still needs a home. And she did still need a home. And so about 9.30 that night, um, after we gathered all of the diapers and bottles and all the things that we needed, they brought by this little beautiful girl And that was Amy. So God knew exactly what we needed and what Amy needed. And he put us together beautifully because of the wisdom of God and the way he works through his people. So that's our story. Isn't that so wonderful? Often, just like the sheep have to go through some hard places to get to that summer highland, Sometimes we, like sheep, have to go through some hard things, hard moments, hard times, hard choices, hard changes to get to the goodness of God. The Bryans have Amy because God took them through a little hard spot and filled them up with goodness and kindness and a great blessing. So boys and girls, we know our plans aren't the best. But just like the babies who don't know God's best plans all the time, but just like infants who don't always know what's best for them, we don't always know what's best for us. We have a good, good father in God who always knows what's best because he made us. He knows our past. He knows the future. He knows all about us. And he's looking out for our good all the days of our lives. Now let's listen to one more mom. She has some good reminders for us. Hey guys, I'm Allie, Gracie, Dalen, and Stone's mom. When I think about all the hard things in my life that I've been through, I think about how much grace I've been given by all the people that I love and that love me and my family. And I know that even though things don't turn out the way that I want them to or the way that I had planned, that the way things do turn out is exactly how he has planned. And I continue to try to be patient and trust in him and know that it will all turn out the way that it's supposed to. As you continue to grow and get older and wiser, that is one of the things that you learn. And instead of being disappointed in yourself or the people that you love, it's really important to know that it's all part of the plan. And 
having the love and support from those that you love and that love you and your family is what helps you get through it all. Just know that he loves you and he has a plan for you and it will get easier. It always gets easier. And even when you feel like you don't know what to do, you can't do this and you don't know how it's gonna turn out. In the end, you will get through it. You will know what to do. And it will turn out the way it's supposed to because he's there with you the entire time. And everything that seems so imperfect is perfectly imperfect. Don't forget that. She's right, boys and girls. So when you're getting frustrated because things don't work out, instead of being disappointed, just trust and know God must have something better in mind. I didn't get to be on the team I wanted to be on. I didn't get to have the play date I wanted to have. I didn't get to wear the outfit I wanted to wear. I didn't get to go on the vacation I wanted to go on. But that's okay because my good, good shepherd must have something better in mind. Ask your friends and your family members this week. Do you remember a time when you had a plan and God changed the plan and it worked out to be so much better? We asked it at our dinner table a couple of weeks ago and everyone had a story. Just ask Sammy about his baseball team story. I bet you have stories too. God is good to all of us, all the days of our lives. And that adds up to a lot of stories. So go out and get some of those stories about our good, good shepherd and the goodness and mercy that chase us down every day of our lives. Bye. I promised them I would not embarrass them.